in a world, in a time, in a world, in a time, in no time, in no world, in a day and age when the movie trailer voice has largely become a comedic joke. And in that world, where movie studios have decided to cut $5,000 in production costs per movie and dump the movie trailer voice altogether, we're not angry, we're not upset. But what we want is a little nostalgia now and then. And that's why I now provide the movie trailer voice. You can view me at chuckfresh.com, listen to samples, and order online. Hey Chuck Fresh, I'm a professional voice talent here. And a lot of people ask me, well, Chuck, how did you get started in this business? And, you know, it's just a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, if you ask experienced voice talents, they're all competing for the same dollar. So I found they're not going to be a lot of help. And to me, they weren't at all. It was more of like trying to discourage me from doing it. But there are ways for you to get into the voice acting business. And there's just a couple of things you need. You need, well, the first thing you need is a voice. It's got to be a little bit different. It's got to be something that stands out from the average voice. But then again, there's a lot of voices that work just because they're average guy voices. A lot of people are asking for those nowadays. And then you need some decent equipment. You need to sound professional. You need something that's going to record your voice very clearly without a lot of noise in the background. And I'll talk about a couple of those pieces of equipment in this video. So you too can begin a lucrative career in the voice talent industry. My name's Chuck Fresh. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and uh, good luck to you. You can do it. I did it. Hey, man, I'm nobody, and uh, I'm doing pretty darn well in this voiceover industry, and you can too. So give it a shot. Watch the video and uh, check out the tips. Oh, uh, links to the, uh, the, uh, the uh, appropriate equipment down below. Everything you need to get started that no one else will tell you. And you can start this pretty cheap too. It's not as expensive as it used to be. Thanks again for watching. Well, which microphone should I use? Can I just go with a cheap microphone? And does it really matter? Well, I've got a couple different mics here. I'm actually testing three in this video. We're going to test the Logitech. Uh, I've got an HD Pro webcam microphone, which is hearing all the background noise for me, from me. And then I have a uh, Shure SM7B that's running through a C entrance mic port Pro digital to all, uh, analog converter. And then I've got a Samsung C01U, which has its own built-in digital to analog converter, which is... Uh, it's actually pretty cool that, to have everything built into this microphone. So, uh, especially if you're traveling, you could take it with you, and uh, it's not a whole lot to carry. Just throw it in your laptop bag, and you've got a studio on the road. So, um, just going to do a little bit of difference between these microphones. Actually, I have the Samsung and the Shure on uh, the Shure's on the left channel, the Samsung's on the right. So, if you want to listen to them together, you can actually, if you have a left and right audio switch, you can uh, do a comparison in real time. Um, also, I'm going to switch back and forth between the Logitech webcam camera, too. So people who are doing podcasts, YouTube videos, uh, vlogs, things like that, you might want to listen to the differences in these microphones and uh, see which one sounds best to you. I'm not going to tell you which one I think is better. I'll let your ears do the deciding for you. Equipment wise, you're going to want to try to get the best equipment that you can afford. I'm using an EVR E320, and to me, it's a broadcast microphone. A lot of radio people use it, and it just makes your voice boom. It really captures the essence of it. Focusrite makes some beautiful all analog to uh, digital converters. And what that is, it takes the microphone signal, which is analog, and turns it into a digital signal. Very clean, very little clicking, popping artifacts, and then you can really just massage the heck out of it with software. I use Sony's SoundForge Pro, and it's an affordable piece of software, uh, a couple of hundred bucks, and it's got a bunch of filters and plugins that really accentuate your voice, that can do magical things to it. It's amazing. I mean, look what I've done in this video in some of my demos. It's affordable, it's easy to use, and there's a very, 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 very shallow learning curve, unlike Pro Tools or some of the bigger um, software packages or more expensive software packages. What really sucks is my voice is only like this till about 10.30 in the morning. Then it goes to crap. I wish my voice was like this all friggin' day. A lot of people ask me, well, how do you get your voice so deep? Well, this is my normal voice. And uh, it really depends on how your vocal cords are arranged and how the muscles in your throat work. So um, you either 
have a really deep voice or you have to do a couple of tricks to really fatten it up a little bit. And there's a couple of things you can do. Now, microphones have something called a proximity effect, meaning the closer you get to your microphone, the deeper your voice will sound due to the way it picks up bass. So if you can get really close to that microphone and kind of talk across it without talking into it, you still end up popping your piece and make sure you have a pop filter on your microphone also. And some microphones pick up bass a little bit better than others. Um, a lot of the shore microphones tend to do a real good job with bass response and they just bring it down, captures a little bit more of the uh, vibration on the lower end of the uh, hertz spectrum. So. If your voice isn't naturally low, you can try to push it down as far as you can, but that'll end up probably hurting your voice by the end of the day and giving you a sore throat. But if that's what you need to do for some of your other types of voices, if you're doing the traditional announcer, which nobody really wants anymore, um, you could do that. You can kind of push it down using your diaphragm to push air up through your vocal cords. And uh, it tends to go through your nose a little bit too, but nobody wants a nasal voice. Nasal voices are really annoying. And same thing you too, you can do like a falsetto, which is kind of talking through your nose. If you really need to push your voice up really high, but we're talking about getting your voice really low here. So I do um, Bill Curtis, I do uh, James Earl Jones and Darth Vader and those type of things. But most of those voices are done with post-processing effects. Meaning I'll use the, the uh, bass proximity effect. So I will get really close to the microphone and talk as deep as I can. And... One other thing before I forget, too, it's always better to do it in the morning. When I wake up, my voice is naturally deeper. It's a little rough, so I have to have a little coffee to kind of wake things up a little bit and loosen things up. But in the morning, your voice will be a little bit deeper, and you'll notice this if you tend to do this kind of thing a lot. Try to do them early in the morning as soon as you wake up, as soon as you can kind of read. Wipe the sleep out of your eyeballs. And after you've done that, if you get your voice as low as you possibly can on your recording with your proximity effect using the morning... Then you go into your software, and most uh, professional uh, voice processing, digital voice processing uh, programs, I use SoundForge a lot, a lot of people use Pro Tools, and something called a pitch bending effect. And well, it's a pitch shift. A bend makes you go, the shift actually brings it down. And you can bring it down like negative one octave. You want to go lower than that because it starts to sound kind of machining, a little strange. So. Play with the digital effects to bring your pitch down. You want to actually shift your pitch downward like negative 1, negative 1 1.2 to get that really, really deep down announcer type effect. And it works with just about any voice. Of course, if you talk like this and try to put it in there like this, it's going to be a little weird. But So there's the three things. There's bass proximity, talking close to the microphone. Uh, the second thing is uh, try to do your deep voices early in the morning. And obviously your other higher voices later in the day when your voice naturally kind of warms up. And then uh, play with your digital editing tools and see how much uh, you can actually shift the pitch within there. And the combination of those tricks, you'll be able to get your voice nice and deep, super deep. And you too will sound like Bill Curtis. This is a normal voice, my normal read. And then this is the voice after I process it with some pretty cool electronic software tools that you can buy yourself and afford. What a difference, huh? Even when Knucklehead was a child, there was something that separated him from the rest. Knucklehead's stormy years provided much of the inspiration for lyrics that would one day address the angst, insecurities, and uncertainties of a future generation. Despite the lack of support from Knucklehead's family, and the overwhelming odds against success in the competitive music industry, Knucklehead was prepared to face the struggle head on. As far as a space to record goes, you want somewhere really, 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 really quiet, as quiet as possible. A lot of people use a closet because it's an inside room. You don't hear lawn mowers or traffic outside or kids screaming. You really don't want any of that background noise. And you don't want hums from air conditioners or any kind of electronic units or computers. So run a really long cable into the quietest closet you can find, and that'll cut out a lot of the echo and stuff too. Now, there's a lot of websites like Voices.com and Voice123 and some of the other ones. They're called pay-to-play websites. But in my experience, they seem to be very heavily favoring certain voice talents. 
and everybody else just falls through the cracks, including myself. So I had to get off of those things. I was spending several hundred dollars a year on, on those websites and they just weren't working out for me. So I found my best business was coming from Fiverr.com. Yeah, everybody's going to say, don't do that. You're going to lowball and destroy the whole industry. But if you're just starting out and you've got no experience, you can get valuable experience and get paid for it. Not a lot, but just think about it. If you're doing a minute for five bucks, how much is that an hour? That's not too shabby if you think about it and do the math. But you can start there. Plus, people will send you scripts. So you don't need to think of scripts yourself. They're going to send you scripts. They're going to pay you a couple of bucks. And then you're going to develop quite a demo while practicing your craft. And it's just a smart way to go. It's Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Great place to start if you've never done voiceovers before. Many people ask... Why have you spent 10 years practicing an impersonation of Morgan Freeman? My voice is heard all over the world in movies and in commercials. I suppose you could say I'm like Visa. I'm everywhere you want me to be. While Mr. Freeman has commandeered the universe, I have been the narrator for pretty much everything on Earth for the past three decades. It has been tough to shake the Darth Vader thing. People continually ask for that impersonation. Ironically, it was a terrible attempt at an English accent. But if it's a character voice you're after, look no further. Yo, sometimes you need that down-home black African-American voice or something you doing. Sometimes you need somebody who sounds kind of like this to do something you're doing. Maybe a rap music intro or some kind of advertisement. Or maybe sometimes you just need a deep, dark, soulful black voice for whatever you trying to pitch. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the world, voice talents would scurry, scrounging like squirrels. On Mickey, on Rudy, on who else is here? Seems Santa Claus's voice was nowhere near. You can have my voice on your video, or whatever you want. And video games, and announcers, and pirates, and sea barrels, and, and, and... Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get that booty shaker? Ain't something you get at the Cracker Barrel gift shop. <laughs> oh, no. Whether you support the legalization of Bud or not, you have to admit, the stereotypical pot smoker is, well, let's just say, pretty laid back. It's time to get up and do your shower. No! Oh, oh my God! It's time to be fabulous! How's my hair? Oh, you look gorgeous. Okay, most important thing. Where's my wine? In a world where movie previews no longer feature a narrator, only loud noises like this. A semblance of a more civilized time is making a comeback. It doesn't matter the mood. It can be the funny movie voice, or the comedy movie voice, or the movie trailer voice where everyone dies. My name is Chuck Fresh. I've got characters, announcers, impersonations, and well over 200 voices to choose from. My attitude is fun, my mic is hot, my studio is slamming, and we're ready to roll. I'm retiring on January 1st, 2020, come hell or high water. So let's do this now.